Power Across Texas welcomes Doyle Benneby, the president and CEO of CPS Energy in San Antonio. Doyle, thanks for being here today. And you have transitioned recently in August 2010 from the largest investor-owned utility in the nation to the largest municipal-owned utility in the United States. Can you tell us a little bit about the similarities and the differences between those two organizations? Well, thanks for the welcome. It's, it's great to speak with you. Um, there are certain uh, similarities and differences. I'd say on the, the similar side, um, we all deal with the same issues. Uh, we're challenged by a transitioning workforce. We're challenged by um, more pressure to keep costs uh, low and contain them. We're also challenged by uh, determining what our future portfolios and investments are going to be as we all transition towards a, a more of a renewable fleet. Um, they're also similar in the sense that we deal with the same kind of uh, regulatory and legislative pressures. So um, that's uh, very, very similar. Uh, on a different side, I think uh, in an investor-owned utility, your horizon tends to be a little bit shorter than a municipal-owned utility. Um, also, uh, the principal stakeholders on a financial side in investor-owned utilities are mostly stockholders. You know, there's, there's more equity financing. Of course, here it's all debt financing and we deal a lot with our, our bond holders. So that's quite a big difference in terms of uh, the, the way you, you analyze and, and, and plan for financing. Um, so those are quite a few of the differences, but I'd say um, all in all, they're both large companies compared to their peers and relatively complex compared to their peers. And for me, that's uh, comfortable and fun. San Antonio is growing significantly. It's now the seventh largest city in the United States and it's projected to grow by more than double in the next 30 years. So does CPS Energy have a plan to meet that growth? And if so, what is that plan? Yes, we have a, a we're beginning to put together a plan. Uh, our concrete plan right now goes out to just about 2020, which is roughly a decade. So in that horizon, we've, we're de we've determined what we want our portfolio to look like on the supply side. So we've taken a look at um, a, a sense of um, quantity and also the types of uh, sources that we want to have. We'd obviously love to have uh, more on a renewable front. We think there'll be more wind, we think there'll be more solar, uh, more baseload natural gas, and probably more nuclear. Um, so that's really how we're planning. So we have a sense of what that those needs will be and we're adjusting accordingly today. Uh, beyond that, um, I think um, we're waiting to see uh, uh, what some of the issues are and how they shape out. For example, on the legislative front, will there be an energy bill? Uh, will shale gas production be what the projections think they're, they're going to be? Will we continue to have more wind in Texas and the corridor from the Midwest part of the United States? So these are all some factors that are playing out that will determine what we, how we go beyond 2020. But we have a good sense of what we're going to be and what we're going to need uh, to accommodate the growth at least up to the year 2020. You mentioned renewable power in San Antonio's future. And we know that renewable power can be more expensive than traditional fossil fuel. How can CPS maintain affordable rates for its, um, for its residents uh, while growing its renewable power portfolio? Well, first I'd like to say we, we are really proud of the fact that we do have the, 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 the lowest rates on average of any major major city utility and we want to keep it that way. So I think it's going to, going to really take uh, um, balancing. So right now, um, you know, we uh, are going to transition into uh, higher percentages of renewables and we think over time if we, if we do it right that we'll do it in a way uh, to leverage the best costs we have now that are available, which we've just uh, signed a couple of solar deals that we think are maybe among the best in the industry in terms of cost. But we think if we gradually uh, increase over time, that it allows some of the uh, renewable energies to mature and we believe prices will come down. So I think as time goes on, uh, we can transition to more renewables. And if we time it right, it'll coincide with maybe some of the retirement dates for some of our fossil plants. And if we match it right, I think we can transition into more renewables at an affordable price. So today, San Antonio gets approximately 34% of its energy from nuclear power. Do you see more nuclear energy in CPS's future? And if so, when would that be? Well, yes, I think we, we will see more nuclear in CPS's portfolio. Um, I think it makes sense. I think the question is how much. 
but I believe uh, nuclear will be a part of our portfolio. Uh, we believe in a balanced portfolio. It's going to be some, some of everything. Um, we want to increase our percentage of renewables, but we also understand there's likely to be a strong uh, presence of uh, nuclear and uh, also natural gas. So here's a question for you. If you could pick just one thing, what would be that one thing that you would like people to know about CPS Energy? Well, that, that we um, um, take seriously our commitment to our customers and community. That that's our number one mission, to provide uh, reliable, affordable power for the community of San Antonio. And I'll save the best question for last, and that is, if you can pick one thing again, what would be that one thing that you would like people to know about Doyle Benneby? Well, that um, uh, he made an impact uh, at CPS, and that um, uh, the workforce is committed and energized. And I think that's more than, more than one, but, uh, but I'll settle for that. Great. Well, thank you very much. We sure appreciate you being here with Power Across Texas and hope to see you again. Thank you. Same here.